People have been moving into the Treasure Valley in record numbers, both before and during the pandemic. The effects of that have been well documented. A shortage of homes available, causing skyrocketing real estate and rental prices, pricing out a lot of people. Then a short-term shutdown of service industries during the pandemic, putting some people out of work, didn't exactly help with affording a place to live. Those two major things have pushed our homeless population to a level we have never seen. And sure, there are other factors at play besides being able to work and afford a home that can contribute to homelessness. Those may be beside the point because at this point, it's a problem in search of a solution. You're probably aware of the homeless encampment on the lawn of the old Ada County Courthouse. Some of the protesters are homeless themselves. Others are advocates and supporters. But they're united in the message that Boise lacks affordable housing and low barrier shelter options. And they've been out there since the middle of January. And just last week, the state house got involved. The governor and attorney general filed a lawsuit against the protesters and a member of Boise Mutual Aid, the group that organized it. We wanted to get a better idea of what this is all about and what the state seeking a court order to end the protest with that happening. Because as we've said several times, state law allows these forms of symbolic protest, but the actual act of camping is illegal. Andrew Bartline is at the old Ada County Courthouse. And Andrew, you spoke with the attorney representing the protesters today, and it sounds like this isn't so black and white. Like this is a question of camping. It sounds like there's a precedent that adds to the confusion. Yeah, well, we'll first start with the injunction we got from the attorney general's office last week. Now, they cite the state's ability to regulate the act of camping through a 2013 court precedent that was Waters versus Otter. That was during the Occupy Boise movement. Now, this state law banning camping is very similar to a former city of Boise law that did the same thing. A 2019 court precedent struck down that Boise law, said it was unconstitutional and in a violation of the Eighth Amendment. Now that's your protection against cruel and unusual punishment. Now the logic behind this, the protesters attorney, he also served as the lead attorney in that 2019 court precedent, is that these are on similar grounds. Now if you ban a homeless person from camping, well, they're homeless. They, they, may not have, they may not have anywhere else to go. So the ban isn't really on camping itself. The ban in practice turns out to be a ban on just being homeless. The government cannot punish homeless people for the status of being homeless. They can't make it illegal for people uh, who have, who are just, um, they're just human. They're, you know, the, everybody sleeps. They need to sleep. They need to eat. They need to keep warm from the, from the elements. These are ordinary things. They need to have a bathroom. There's, you know, that's what the state is attempting to do here. They are de dehumanizing home, the homeless population. Now that 2019 court precedent, it's important to keep in mind, it's only relevant if the homeless shelter systems around here are full and there's no availability, there's no capacity. Think Interfaith Sanctuary, the Boise Rescue Mission System as well. And that is measured by the capacity at these local homeless shelters. Now the injunction says the state confirmed with the Boise Rescue Mission, again, this is in the injunction, that there were available beds when they filed that lawsuit. That's something we've reported as well. But Jody Peterson Steigers, the executive director at Interfaith Sanctuary, that's the low barrier shelter here in Boise. She says that a bed may be open it might be available, but that does not mean that that bed is accessible. On some of the coldest nights, Interfaith Sanctuary may have to turn up to 20 people away. That's something we reported previously this past winter, and those people have to go somewhere. She says sometimes those people can't get into the mission. On any given night that we don't have enough beds, we call the rescue mission. We call both the men's and the women's shelter, and we give them the list of names that we don't have space for. And they very kindly say, these guests can stay with us, these guests cannot. And that's always been our relationship, and we have never questioned the decision-making of their shelter. We respect how they make that decision, but in fact, on any given night that we can't find space, there is not necessarily a bed for that person at the rescue mission. And that's okay. it's okay, we just need to be honest about that. Now, Peterson Steigers adds that the need for their services are growing, they can't help everyone in need, and if these people can't find help at the rescue mission either, again, there's nowhere else for them to go. They're homeless people, they have all their belongings with them, they really don't have any other choice, Brian. 
And as you notice right behind Andrew there last week, ISP came in and kind of cleaned out some of the trash and stuff that goes along with camping there. But as you can see, they are still there and likely will be until we get some sort of court ruling on this case. Thank you very much, Andrew.